the psalmist declares, and we agree that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. My name is Gregory Messick, and I am the pastor of the Antioch United American Free Will Baptist Church. And we are just grateful and thankful to God that you have uh, decided to join us for our Sunday school. Uh, there will be those that will be joining us live, and there will be those that will be joining us uh, and listening to this at a later point. Uh, I am live on today, and uh, it is an honor and a privilege to uh, to be our, to be your guide as we study to show ourselves approved unto Him, a worker that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So with that being said, let us turn to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we want to say thank you for the blessings of another day, and thank you for this opportunity that you have afforded us to gather in this virtual classroom this Sunday morning, that we might study to show ourselves approved unto you, working that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divided the word of truth. Now, God, we ask your blessings upon us individually and collectively, that we might get an understanding of the principles that are being taught within your word. And then God help us to not only be hearers of your word, but help us to be doers of your word as well. This is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So today's lesson is entitled Confident Love. Today's lesson is entitled Confident Love. We're going to be looking at uh, 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Uh, for those who have your Bibles, uh, if you have your Sunday school book, you can follow along with me. Um, I will be using the standard commentary on today. Uh, so if you see that my pages do not match exactly what you have, uh, that, is the, that is the reason why. But today's lesson is dealing uh, with on the topic of confident love. And so if you will remember that since we started this unit back in uh, September, we have been looking at this whole idea of love. We have looked at issues that exist within our love relationships. We have looked at trying to define what love is. And so this month, we're looking at what it means uh, to have godly love between believers. And so love is one of these things. It, it is a four-letter word. We're going to talk about several four-letter words for today. Um, but love... Uh, it should take precedence over all things, okay? And so today we're going to be continuing in uh, this month of November looking at uh, what it means to have godly love between believers. And so with this, I hope that what we're looking at is looking at not just our relationship with God, but looking at our relationship with other people, looking at our relationship with other uh, believers, uh, and so with that being said, let us take a look at John chapter, uh, excuse me, 1 John chapter 3, verses 11 through 24. I'm going to read them all, and then we're going to dive into the Word of God. Uh, so the Bible reads from the New International Version of the Bible, For this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from life to death because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God 
and we receive him from and we receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command to believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commandments lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. So then let's take a look at this book of 1 John. So the book of 1 John uh, was written by the Apostle John. Uh, so keep in mind that in the Bible, there were two gentlemen that were known by the name of John. Uh, the first is John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Christ. So John the Baptist is not the author of any books that uh, bear the name John, because keep in mind that John the Baptist uh, uh, passed away before Jesus did. And so these particular books were written uh, by the Apostle uh, John. Uh, by the Apostle John, who was one of the uh, who was one of the disciples, and so as we look at the writings of John, so the writings of John consist of uh, the Gospel according to John, First, Second, Third John, and the Book of Revelation. These books were written towards the end of the the written uh, of the chronological narrative of the Bible. So in other words, what I'm saying is, is that uh, when we look at the New Testament of the Bible, the books are not written in, they're not, they do not appear in the order in which they were written, okay? Uh, so they do not appear in the order uh, by which they were written. And so that is to say that, you know, when we look at it, um, it was Mark's gospel that was actually written before uh, any of the other gospels. Uh, it was the book of James, uh, I believe is one of the first books that was written uh, within the New Testament. Don't quote me on that one, but I believe that I'm correct. And so John is the last person uh, from a chronological perspective to, uh, to write in what we have as, as our Bible. And so uh, the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and the book of Revelation. Uh, so the book of the book of uh, Gospel of John, the reason why it appears so early is because it is one of the Gospels. So the New Testament is written uh, in order of uh, the Gospels. Then you have the Book of History. Then you have the, the then you have the Epistles. Um, you have the Pauline letters, uh, 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 his letters to churches, and then his pastoral le letters. Then you have the other Epistles, uh, sometimes known as Sound Doctrine. And then you have uh, uh, the book of Revelation. Okay, so that's a little bit of biblical, uh, biblical uh, uh, history for you. And so one of the things that John had to deal with as he was writing this, um, it was that he had to deal with false teachings. Uh, he had to deal with false teachings. And, and specific, uh, specifically, he was dealing with uh, um, this idea of Gnosticism. And so, um, and so one of the things that uh, Gnostics taught was that it did not matter if a person had morality or love. As long as he or she had secret knowledge, uh, then they would be all right. So in other words, you know, this is where you get some of these passages where you say, you know, try, try the spirit to see if it is of God. Because even in today's time, you will have many that will say stuff, it sounds right, it sounds spiritual enough, but it does not line up with the word of God. And so, you know, uh, looking at it, we've seen certain things even in our recent history over the past week or two, where we have seen things that have been questionable that were done supposedly uh, in the name of Jesus, but then now we see that, 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 that the persons that were doing it were false prophets, okay? Uh, that God told them something, and obviously God didn't tell them because it did not come to pass. Uh, and so we have to be careful of, 
of, of these false teachings that may exist. And so as we look at the book of, of 1 John in particular, there are three things that John wants us to focus on. And that is right belief, right actions, and right love. So right belief, right actions, and right love. And these things are connected. What we believe, how we behave ourselves, and then how we love one another are all interconnected here. And so with that, as we look at uh, John chapter 3, uh, where our text is, it opens up in verse number 11 with a very familiar command. And it's interesting that we have been talking about some of this through both our Sunday school lessons and our Bible study lessons. And so take a look at that first command uh, at verse number 11. For this is the message you have heard from the beginning, that we should love each other. And so once again, we see the, the fundamentals going back to the basics. And so, you know, in, uh, you know, in context of what we were talking about this week in, in Bible study, uh, before we get carried away, you know, with, with, with gifts of the Spirit, you know, we need to learn how to love one another. Because let's just be honest, it doesn't matter how many tongues you can speak in, uh, how many prophetic oracles you can give in, but if you if you are hatred, if you are hateful, and if you if you are mean, and you have a mean spirit, and a mean attitude, don't have a nice word to say uh, uh, to anybody or about anything, then, then then you need to go back and get some things straightened out. And so the Bible says that remember what we were taught from the beginning. This is what Jesus taught. And in fact, you know, love is one of those things that was taught uh, uh, even from the beginning. And I would not start all the way at the beginning, but take a look at the Ten Commandments. Take a look at the first two commandments. Love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. And then love your neighbor as yourself. Love has always been a critical part of uh, uh, having a successful relationship with God. We love God. And so as we look at that, love, uh, loving God is this whole idea of worship. That we have no other gods before him, uh, that, that, we, that, we, that we love God. That's worship. But then the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. That is the foundation of mission work within the church. So remember, love. Love God. And then where our text picks up is love your neighbor. Love each other. And remember, we talked about who our neighbor was, right? When we looked at the story of the Samaritan. Remember, I don't like that word, good Samaritan. If, if it helps you to remember it, that's fine. But, uh, but the story of the Samaritan. You know, and the story was, who is, the uh, The question was, who is my neighbor? And then Jesus gave the parable. And so, piggybacking on all of that, once again, love comes up. So, you know, I often wonder, why is it that the Bible has to mention this concept of love so much? You know, so throughout, throughout the Bible, you know, this whole idea of loving our, our brothers, loving our sisters, loving our neighbors, uh, loving, you know, our enemies. Why is love mentioned so much in the Bible? My hypothesis is that the reason why it is mentioned so much is because we struggle with it so much within the body of Christ. And, you know, and because we struggle with it so much, it is something that always has to be addressed. It's something that we always have to be mindful of. Because remember, uh, anytime you use this word love, uh, anytime that you have more than one person involved in anything, you're bound to have disagreements. Anytime that you have more than one person involved in anything, 
you're not going to agree on everything. There's going to be disagreements. There's going to be things that people do that you like, and there's going to be things that people do that you don't like. There will be some people, they will be your best friend. There will be some people, they will get on your last nerve. Uh, but yet we got to deal with all of these things within the body of Christ. And so keep in mind that this commandment to love, this instruction to love has not changed. And it has not changed from the beginning and it is still the same. But then also, let's move a little bit further because the way that John puts it, he goes, you know, he, he, he really does go back to the beginning because not only does he say that we should love one another, but then he gives us a counter narrative. He gives us an example of what happens when we do not, when we are not motivated, when we are not uh, governed by a spirit of love. And so then he goes back to Cain and, and Abel, which were uh, sons of Adam. Okay, so we're going all the way back to the book of Genesis. And so it says, do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. And so what we see here is that, um, is that Cain was motivated by a spirit of jealousy. Cain was motivated by a spirit of jealousy. Um, so remember, uh, jealousy and envy, that came up in one of our previous lessons. I can't recall if it was Bible study or if it was Sunday school, but we, we talked a little bit about envy the last time. So, um, and I think it was Bible study, but remember we said that, that jealousy, it has two meanings. Uh, so, so first of all, when we look at this whole idea of, of, of jealous, it has its root uh, as, as to be zealous. And so, you know, God is a jealous God, and He will have He will have us to have no other gods uh, before Him. But then, another way of looking at at jealousy is uh, it, it is an unpleasant suspicion. Or another way of saying it, you know, when you spend your time looking at somebody else's paper, you know, and you're like, mm, look at what they got on. Mm, mm, isn't that this nice? Mm, isn't that this special? Mm, look at the way, look at the way she, mm, look at the way she does walk in the church like that. Mm, you know, so, so it's an unpleasant suspicion. But then in me, uh, it is um, it is coveting. It is you know discontent at somebody else's you know. So it's not just the fact that you're looking at what somebody is doing, but oh, mm, look at look at that that shoes. Look at her. She thinks she all that because she got you. It's not the fact that you you look at the point. Look at the uh, the fact that you know particular woman. She got a husband. No, now envy says you want the husband. Jealousy says you look at the husband and you, you, you know, mm, oh, that's so nice, you know. But envy says now you want the husband. Or vice versa. Uh, jealousy says, you know, wow, man, you know, he, he, he got a nice wife, you know. You know. Uh, but then what envy says is I want that wife. I want, I want his wife. Okay, um, and so when we look at the story of Cain and Abel, Cain was motivated by jealousy. He was motivated by jealousy. And so we have got to be careful. We have got to keep some of these things in check. Um, we have got to keep some of these things in check because what eventually happens is, is that um, Cain's jealousy grew to hatred and then that resulted in murder. Okay? And so that's what happens. You know, and, and we have to, as Christians, we have to always check ourselves. 
uh, when I was growing up, there was this uh, rap song that said, check yourself before you wreck yourself. And so the same principle applies. We have got to always look at ourselves in the mirror and be careful uh, about the scenes that are planted in our lives. So now notice I didn't say the seeds that the enemy plants in our lives because, you know, sometimes seeds can be planted in our minds, you know, just from observation. Seeds can be planted in our minds uh, 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 based on what other people's uh, opinions are or what other people say. And then, of course, seeds can be planted uh, uh, from the deceiver. So we have to be careful about the seeds that are being planted within our hearts and within our minds. And so whenever we see the spirit of jealousy uh, rise up in our lives, whenever we find ourselves, you know, starting to look onto other people's papers so much that we can't focus on our own, uh, you know, then we have to check ourselves. We have to deal with it, allow God to deal with us so that, so that that seed will not take root and grow into something else. Uh, every, how can I say this? Whenever we look at our society and, you know, and, and whenever we look at good people that have gone bad, uh, you know, whenever we look at, you know, people that were doing all right, but then they've gone bad, a seed was planted somewhere within their lives. A seed was planted, but then that seed was allowed to grow. And so we have to be careful about what we let take root in our hearts and what we let take root in our minds. You know, we have to be careful the thoughts that we entertain. Uh, because, you know, and I'll be honest, you know, I tell people all the time, I have a very active imagination. And I do. Uh, and, and sometimes, you know, and if, you, and if you're not careful, your active imagination will cause you to think some things that you don't need to be thinking towards somebody else. If you're not careful, that active imagination will cause you to be jealous of somebody else. It will cause you to be envious of somebody else. It will cause you, you know, uh, to become hateful. It, it will cause you to become spiteful. It will cause you to become mean. Why? Because whatever it was, whatever that seed was, it was not dealt with when it first was planted. And that is why, uh, you know, as we, you know, as the Bible says, you know, uh, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, uh, and it goes on, and it says, think on these things. Whatsoever things are lovely, think on these things. Okay? And so, and so now you see that jealousy leads to hatred. Um, and so now the Bible moves on and talks about hatred, which is the next um, uh, emotion, if you will, that I want to talk about. Uh, the Bible says, do not be surprised if the world hates you. Okay? So for as much as I would love to say that that there is no hatred in the world or it's, you know, there's hatred in the world. You know, just as there is good and evil, you know, wherever there's good, wherever there's evil, um, wherever there is love, there's also hate. Uh, but I don't want you to get this mistaken because the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is not hate. You know, there was this movie, uh, it's a thin line between love and hate. Uh, and that's true. Why? Because if, if we say that love is over here, hate is not over here. Really, hate is somewhere over here. Because just as you can love somebody, intently and passionately and with everything and with every fiber of your being, you can hate somebody just as much. It's a thin line. So now somebody says, well, what, what, is the, what is the 
you know, the, 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 the difference, if you will, you know, between uh, what is the opposite of, of, of love? Well, I think that, you know, from an emotional standpoint, from an emotional standpoint, the opposite of love is indifference. I don't care. Uh, and, you know, and, and that's, that's another thing we have to get in check, right? You know, that, that I don't care spirit. Uh, and, 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 and my mother told me, you know, when I was very young, uh, she says, I would know, uh, you know, two, you know, she said, she said she picked up on that with me that I could get to the point, you know, something, something happened. I just don't care. You know, I, and not in a good way, I don't care. It was in a bad way, I don't care. You know, my mom said she would take toys away from me. I'm like, I don't care. And she said she had to break that. This is a punishment by taking the toys away. And I was like, I don't care. She's like, she, I just looked at her and just, you know. Uh, but, but the opposite, you know, but indifference is something else that we have to take care of, right? Uh, well, if the truth be told, I'm still working on the building uh, <laughs> uh, as far as that one is concerned. Um, but the point is, the Bible says that we should not be surprised if the world hates us. And so whenever we look at the world, the world uh, in this context specifically applies to those who are against God, who are against the things of God, and who go out and defiantly uh, 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 sin or go against the commandments of God. So it's just uh, so 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 using those three you know examples, you know it's it's not a person who is ignorant of the things of God, so then they do wrong. Uh, it is a person is not a person who makes a mistake or you know you know whatever. But you know the world in this context means a person who is defiant, who is going against the things of God, and most importantly, going against the people of God. As Christians, do not expect everybody to like you. Don't expect everybody to congratulate you. Don't expect everybody to root for your success. Um, uh, a, 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 a preacher uh, and he said this in a sermon, and, and I, I, it stuck with me. Um, he says, you know, the song from the OJs, they said, they smile in your face, and all the time, they're trying to take your place. That should be in the hymn book. And I said, you know what? <laughs> but it's true. Don't expect everybody to like you. Don't expect everybody to congratulate you. And in fact, the same people they might, they might congratulate you to your face, but then as soon as you walk around, uh, as soon as you go the other way, they talking about you. They done ran you into the ground. They started, you know, demeaning everything that you did. Who do they think they are? They ain't that, and they ain't this, and I remember this, and then they start bringing up stuff like that. Don't be surprised when people don't like you. You know, stop trying to be everybody's friend. You know, stop to stop it. You know, because that's what, that's another reason why we get in trouble. Because we trying to we trying to get everybody to like us. Everybody not gonna like you. Everybody is not gonna like you. And, and this is where I do get a little, you know, indignant and indifferent. And to be honest with you, I don't care who likes me or who don't like me, because I look in the mirror, and as long as I like myself. That's all that. Oh, shut up. See, that's what my mama had to do, you know. I, I do like that sometimes. <laughs> but the point is, don't get to a place where you become distracted because people do not like you or they don't receive you or even if they hate you, okay? Um, and so then, so then uh, the Bible um, the Bible then says, um, the Bible then says, is that, well, how do we know? Uh, we know that we have passed from life to death because we love one another. So if we love one another, if we are motivated by a spirit of love, then uh, we are operating in, in the spirit of God. However, 
uh, if we do not love one another, then what the Bible says is that we're operating in a spirit of death. So love brings life. Uh, hatred brings, brings death. Okay? Um, and then the Bible then goes on in verse number 15, and I highlighted this one in a different color. It says, if anyone, anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. And so, wow, I started to think about this. Because, you know, it start, I started off talking about jealousy, right? Then we started talking about hatred, and now we're talking about anger, hatred and anger. Hatred uh, uh, that is expressed by anger or anger that is expressed by hatred. Uh, I don't know which one expresses which, chicken and the egg type of deal. Um, and so the Bible says that if we hate, so now it's not even talking about the world hating us. It says that if we have hate in our hearts, if we, you know, uh, are, 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 you know, uh, 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 have hatred within our hearts towards somebody else, then the Bible says, and think about this thing, the Bible says that we are a murderer. Think about that. It, 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 in other words, what it's saying is that in order to kill somebody, I don't have to have a weapon. I don't have to have, you know, some sort of a, uh, a knife or a gun or use some type of physical, you know, uh, exert some type of physical force or, or whatever. No, the Bible says that if I operate in a spirit of hate, then I am the same as a murderer. I am the same as a murderer. And the Bible says that a murderer uh, will, will, will not have any place in the kingdom of God. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Parker. Thank you, Sister Parker. Y'all know where I'm coming from. Y'all know where I'm coming from. <laughs> All right. So, um, so with that being said, uh, so then we deal with, start with hatred, excuse me, start with jealousy, went to hatred, now dealing with anger. So now let us now look at the second section. So the second section uh, begins with verse number 16, and it says, um, and it gives us a model for love. Um, and so one thing that I love about the Bible, and, and this is the reason why you cannot read passages of the Bible in isolation, because the Bible, you have to read it in context. So, it, so, in other words, what I'm saying is, is that you don't read first, just verse number 11. You need to read the entire context so that you can understand the full picture of what the Bible is saying. And so then, uh, the Bible says, yes, in verse number 11, that we should love one another. But then, so then that was the principle. That was the command. But now, as we look at verse number 16, it gives us... Uh, it gives us an exposition as to what this means. It gives us the origin. So, you know, this is another lesson as we are studying the Bible uh, uh, in our private devotion. So, uh, and I'll give you, I will give you a, a very practical example. I know that with a lot of apps, uh, you know, with our, uh, on our phones, uh, we have these uh, verse of the days, you know, this is not verse of the day, or, you know, um, you know, if you have like planners, like Christian planners, it will have the verse of the day or the verse of the week or whatever. That's good. Don't get me wrong. It's good to read the verse of the day. But what you should strive to do is to then take that verse and read it in context. And so if the verse of the day comes from John chapter 3, verse 16, or if it comes from Psalm 23, uh, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Well, then you need to continue to read the 23rd Psalm so that you can understand the full picture of what the Bible is, is saying. And so 
And so that is another nugget, and that's one thing that I would want for you to strive to do uh, as you're you know, looking at your verses of the day or, or whatever, is to not just read the verse of the day, not just read the memory verse, uh, but then go back and take a look at the context uh, of, 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 of the passage. You know, when I was growing up in church, you know, we used to, you know, have Bible verses, you know, uh, and you would read, you know, or you weren't supposed to read, you were supposed to memorize uh, your Bible verse. But then as we grow older, what we should be striving to do is to, uh, is to, uh, what, should, what we should be striving to do is to understand the context uh, behind uh, you know what these verses are. What these verses are saying, um, and, and and especially you know I'm not old, but you know my my memorization skills. You know uh, there used to be a time where I couldn't remember. So I, you know I used to have photographic memory, but now that that's gone. Um, uh, if I don't write it down or have it written down for me, I forget. Um, but but the important thing is to understand the Bible in context. And so with that being said. Um, you know, we look at, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and therefore we are to lay down our lives for our brothers and our sisters. So, you know, hate to be redundant, but this really goes back to Bible study. And remember we said that in Bible study, that our relationship with God uh, it is based on God's love for us. Salvation does not begin with us. Salvation begins with God. God loved. Christ loved. Therefore, we should love. Okay? So you see, love, love, love. God loved, he gave. Christ loved, he gave. Now we should love. Follow the example. Follow the example. Um, and, and, you know, and different people have different ways of learning. Um, and, and I'll be honest, you know, one of, one of, one of the best ways that I learned to, the, one of the best ways that I learn is by example. Uh, if I, you know, if I see something, then I'm going to try to repeat what I saw. Uh, and, and, and a lot of times, like, especially like when I am, uh, you know, at the gym or, you know, working with my personal trainer and we're going over a, uh, an exercise. Uh, and if it's something that I have not done or if I haven't done it in a while, I'll say, stop right there. I need for you to do this. And, and then he'll do whatever it is. And I said, okay, I can, I can, I can do that because I've seen you do it. Now he could have explained, you know, what I need to do, but I said, no, I need you to do this. So in the same way, God does not just tell us to love, but he's already shown us how to do it. Okay? So, and so then now as we push the point, uh, you know, because God, God loved, God gave. Christ loved, he gave. And so somebody says, well, you know, that's, that's a stretch. That's, that's a reach, right? Because when God loved, he gave his only son. And, you know, uh, for those who have children, you know, I don't care if you have one son or if you have ten sons. You're not willing to give not one of them up for whatever, you know. Uh, you know, and so God loved and he gave his only son. Christ loved and he gave his life. And so people say, well, that's, that's a stretch. But let's make this a little more practical. Uh, and that's where verse number 17 is. Verse number 17 says, as we look at, you know, this concept of love that has been demonstrated, verse 17 says that if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Amen. Boom, shot Amen. Wow. I mean, you know, now, 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 and, and, and the reason why I say it is that the Bible, it really drops it, 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 you know, it really brings this thing home. Because now the Bible is not talking about the abstract, you know, I give my son or the in the abstract, I give my life. 
You know, but now the Bible says in practical terms, if I have material possessions and I see someone who is in need and have no pity on them, then how can the love of God be in me? Ooh. Yes, that's a big pill to swallow. Like, like the Bible, I mean, that, that just, you know, that hits you where it hurts, if you're honest, right? Because because the Bible because the Bible is not talking about you know you know giving your your child or it's not talking about giving your life. Now it's saying hey if I have material possessions it, what material possessions it doesn't matter if I have clothes mm -hmm. and I see someone who is in need of clothing and they're my size Amen. and I have no pity on them then the Bible says that the love of God is not in me. You know, you know, I, I was, I was, you know, uh, well, I, I ain't gonna talk about well, what I have in storage, but you know, for example, uh, not in my office here, but in my in my other office, I have paper towels and whatever galore. Uh, get ready, remember, I'm not man, you can set that stuff out, and give it away, uh, get, that, get that out of my office. But if I'm sitting here written in the middle of a pandemic, and I know that there are other people who need paper towels and toilet paper and uh, uh, sanitizer and disinfectant wipes. And I'm sitting here and I got a whole boatload of it, but I have no pity on them. And I said, well, I've been praying for you. You should go, you should go down to Walmart on Tuesday at six o'clock. That's when they put it. But if I know I got the stuff, and then I know that I see somebody in need, and I don't do what I and and, and, and if I have no pity on them, then the Bible says that the love of God is not within me. And, and that's you know, yeah, you know that 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 thing that thing kind of it makes you think sometimes. You know, it, it, it makes you think sometimes because it it, 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 it makes us think, wow, you know, um, you know, am I really loving the way that I'm supposed to love? Now, don't get me wrong. Do, do not get me wrong because that does not mean that every time, you know, that you'll be able to do something. Okay? You know, because, you know, and, it, and this is one of those questions that comes up all the time, you know, about like if you see someone who has a, expressed a need. You know, uh, it could be even, you know, like people who are like at the corners of the streets or like in the shopping centers and this, you know, do you have a dollar or whatever, you know, uh, uh, do you, are you supposed to give every time? Uh, that, I do not believe is what the Bible is referring to. Okay. I do not believe that the Bible is referring to, you know, every time that I see somebody, you know, that I need to, you know, whatever. Uh, but what the Bible, but what I believe that the spirit of what the Bible is saying is, is that if I have something, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and actually the last couple of times, uh, you know, it, you know, people, you know, like I was at uh, grabbing my breakfast, and I grabbed my breakfast from the same place literally every day, um, and, you know, like, well, you know, do you have a couple of dollars where I can, you know, uh, uh, get something to eat? I was like, well, I'm getting ready to walk in here. What can I get you? What, what can I get you? Uh, because, you know, uh, and then and then if that person says, hey, you know, can I get, uh, you know, a, a cheese biscuit and a, a cup of coffee? Oh, I got you. I got you. You know? But if that person says, you know, not nah, man, I already just have the money. Okay. Uh, even or not, I don't tell a lie because, you know, I don't keep cashing like that, you know. Like, if you want something, I will go get it for you. But, you know, I don't, you know, cash is becoming a thing of the past, mm -hmm. especially with the coin shortage. But, but, but that's what I think the, the, the Bible means here, is that, you know, if you can, you know, uh, if you can just walk past the person and not have any pity on them, no, no sympathy, no, um, no empathy, uh, you know, if you can't put yourself in that person's shoes, then the Bible says that the love of God is not in your heart. Um, and, 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 and really, uh, Elder Shirai, this goes back to um, uh, the story of the Samaritan. Mm -hmm. It goes back to the story of the Samaritan. That, you know, when that man was, had fallen victim to the thieves, mm -hmm. that you had 
the priest and you had the Levite that went the other way. You had the pastor and you had the deacons and they went the other way. But then the Samaritan was the only one that had uh, mercy uh, on that on that man that fell victim to thieves. And so, you know, once again, you see these concepts beginning to merge. You see these concepts beginning to merge. That um, that when, it, when, it, when we look at what the Bible wants for us to do, you know, it is impossible. You know, uh, you know. Sometimes I wish I could. Uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 Elder Shrod, uh I, I wish I could. You know, say. You know, I wish I. You know, help everybody every time that there was. A, you know, uh, if I and, 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 the, and the sad. Well, it's not the sad part. Right? If I could, I would. You know, uh, I think I've gotten myself in trouble helping some people when I shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it, it, uh, yeah. You know, uh, but but if we can be heartless, uh, you know, at, as far as our dealings with one another, then it then it questions the the, the level of love that we should, that we have within our heart. Okay, um, I am going to stop there. I did not finish this lesson. Um, I did not finish this lesson, um, and my time is up. So uh, this is what I'm going to do. I, I want to thank you for joining us. I'm going to stop here, uh, uh, I, but I do want you to continue to read uh, this. Uh, and who knows? I, it just depends on how much time I have tonight. I might just come on live just to finish this. Uh, I, I, I really, it really gets to me if I start a lesson and I don't get to finish it uh, because I'm like, wow, you know, you know. There's a whole whole passage there. All right. Yes, Sister Parker. I, yes, I, I I definitely agree with your comment. I I, I definitely agree, agree with your comment. Because um, uh, if, if God loves us and we love ourselves, um, you know, um, and, and and it's okay to be misunderstood. It's okay to be misunderstood because Jesus was misunderstood. Um, you know, everybody's not. Everybody didn't like Jesus. Yeah, you know. So, so I hope and pray that something has been said uh, that will help you. Um, so, with that being said, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, gracious God, we just want to say thank you for this time together in your Word. Help us, God, to show love to one another, just as you have shown love towards us. And Lord, help us not to be motivated by a spirit of jealousy or a spirit of envy, a spirit of hatred, a spirit of anger. But help us, God, to follow the example that you have set for us. Uh, and then, Master, we ask your blessings upon us that in this concept and in all things pertaining to your word, that we will not only be hearers of your word, but that we, we will be doers of your word as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, once again, I thank you for joining us. Thank you to my uh, my uh, to my in in person uh, Sunday school class, my wife and, and family, and, uh, and, and our cameraman Brother Lee. Uh, thank you, uh, Elder Sherrod. I've been calling your name throughout the lesson, uh, uh, but uh, but thank you uh, for for joining us, and we look forward to you joining us in about fifteen minutes. All right, take care, everyone.